The casting and running of agarose gels is an important aspect of molecular biology, allowing quick analysis and occasionally purification of nucleic acids. To cast an agarose gel, you will need tape, a casting tray and gel comb, a conical flask, measuring cylinder, heat proof gloves, gel running buffer, and molecular grade agarose. Do not confuse agarose with agar, which is used to prepare culture plates. Depending on your protocol, you may also need a fluorescent intercalating dye. You will need to weigh an appropriate amount of agarose into your conical flask. This will depend on the percentage gel you require and the volume of the casting tray. A standard 10 centimeter casting tray will require 60 mils of gel. To determine the mass of agarose required, divide the percentage of the gel by 100 and multiply by the volume. For example, for a 0.8% gel of 60 mil volume, you would require 0.48 grams of agarose. After you finish weighing chemicals at the balance, please ensure that you clean up. Wipe the balance and the surrounding area with a damp tissue. Add the appropriate volume of running buffer to the agarose in the conical flask, in this case 60 mil. Then swell the flask. Microwave the flask on high for 30 seconds. Keep a close eye on the flask to ensure it does not overboil. Periodically stop the microwave and while wearing heatproof gloves, swirl the flask. Initially the agarose granules will appear as small translucent lenses. Keep microwaving and periodically swirling until these disappear and the agarose is clear. While the agarose is cooling, you can prepare the casting tray. Apply tape to each end of the casting tray, pressing the tape down firmly on all sides. Place the casting tray on a level surface. Let the agarose cool to approximately 60 degrees. As a rough guide, this is the temperature where you can hold the flask comfortably while wearing your latex or nitrile gloves. You can speed up the cooling by holding the flask under running water. At this stage, you can add your fluorescent dye if required. Remember to swell the flask. Pour the agarose into the casting tray. And insert the comb. Inspect the gel for air bubbles, particularly around the comb. Any air bubbles found can be either popped with a clean dry pipette tip or moved to the ends of the gel. Allow 30 to 40 minutes for the gel to set. It should appear slightly opaque once it's set. Once set, remove the tape and place the gel in the gel tank. Remember, nucleic acids are negatively charged and will migrate towards the positive. Therefore, the comb should be located towards the black cathode end. Pour the running buffer into the gel tank to just cover the gel. The buffer level should be just a few millimetres above the tops of the wells. Carefully remove the comb. The gel is now ready to load. Often it can help to see the wells if there is a dark surface beneath the gel tank. Load your samples onto the gel. Try to get into a comfortable position 
and if possible, support your pipetting arm. Pipette slowly to allow the denser samples to fill up the wells. Ensure you leave a space for the size markers and record which lanes contain which samples. Place the cover on the gel tank and plug it into the power supply. Set the appropriate voltage on the power supply and begin the run. You should be able to observe current on the power supply. And also see bubble formation on the electrodes. When the run has finished, turn off the power supply and switch off at the mains. You can then unplug the gel tank and remove the gel. Hold the gel tray by the ends to prevent the gel from slipping off the tray. You are now ready to look at your gel under the transilluminator.